Hello and happy Friday. It is February 3rd. I had to double check on my computer. Um, and welcome to Wake Up Legendary. My name is Joanne and I am once again super pumped to be here. I get to join you today because Dave is over um, leading Decade in a Day with our Blueprints members. Um, and I have a great guest, another great story. Um, I know you guys are going to absolutely love to hear about him, his journey, and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let me welcome Brandon to the show. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary, Brandon. Hi, Joanne. Thanks for having me on. All right. So where are you located in the world? Yeah, uh, Ohio. So Northeast Ohio. Okay. Okay. So for all of us just tuning in, um, tell us your backstory. How did you even discover Legendary in the first place? So, um, like a lot of people, uh, TikTok. <laughs> so it, when you start to see things go uh, viral and everyone's talking about uh, the, you know, making money online and it was, uh, you know, I did my research and I started to just go down the rabbit hole of affiliate marketing and it always kind of led me back to, to Legendary. So um, I looked at the education and and I took it from there. So it, it really sparked my interest. Uh, and that was my, uh, my, my first look at affiliate marketing. So how long do you feel like you were in the rabbit hole? You saw it for the first time. Did you go and grab the challenge immediately or were you like, what is this? Oh, no, I, I, I think I way overanalyze and think about everything. Like a lot of people probably do. So okay. yes, it, it took some time. I, 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 would watch YouTube videos and then really trying to wrap my head around everything and just getting a big picture. Right. And so you're, took, you're took trying work. to learn it before actually learning it. Yes, yeah, exactly. You wanted to learn it, right? Yeah, you're learning can... it to see if you wanted to learn it. <laughs> yes. Okay. How long do you feel like you were in that process for before you actually oh. got the challenge? Um, maybe six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, would, I would say it was, it was a while. Uh, yeah. I feel like that is actually more common and um, sometimes our own affiliates are, you know, or, or even once you get going, people are like, Oh, they, they bought the challenge. They didn't start. Or I have all of these leads on my email list, but they're not buying. And, you know, but it just, for a lot of people, it just takes a little more time and you just got to keep, keep the communication rolling. Right. So did you end up grabbing the challenge from the first person you saw it from? Uh, you know, know. Was so, yeah, I don't know. It was yeah. the whole process when you, when you start to sign up and looking at the different funnels that people have and who actually started to follow. Mm -hmm. And I, I have no idea who my affiliate link came from. It, right. it wasn't. Um, and that was probably what took me so long too, because I, did so much research on so many different people that were successful and you just start to lose track. Um, so I did not have a, a direct mentor or anything that um, introduced me. Okay. Okay. So you are a landscaper, correct? Well, I'm a landscape designer. I used to be a landscaper, like landscape designer like 20 you. years ago. Um, <laughs> so the, the hard work is what um, the physical labor is, mm. you know, daunting and you, you realize we're getting older you can't do it all the time right so um, then i got into the landscape design portion and i do uh, a 3d landscape design so i have uh, some tech skills some some background mm -hmm. so i really transitioned from um, working in the field to working in the office and that was one of the reasons that it took me down this path to making money online so i'm working in the office and in ohio we have these, you know, it's, it's right now it's 10 degrees outside and snowing. So, so in between the downtime, I always tried to uh, educate myself and, and affiliate marketing just really seemed like a, a, a good path and legendary just supplied a, uh, a great blueprint for that. Right. And, and that's so true. I mean, your, your, your trade, <laughs> your, your day job, is it 12 months a year? really right it's it's it, it is inconsistent 
and what a great thing to fill it with instead of, you know, binging on Netflix and hoping for the, the sun to come back, <laughs> you know, better weather. <laughs> Yeah, that was my that was really my first step yeah. to trying to understand that there's only so many hours in the day. Um, you know, we have these seasons that, um, you know, are unpredictable. So I wanted something that I could have control of, that I could scale myself. So the energy that I put in, I could get a return and actually you know, see that work um, right. result in something. So what do you think was your biggest worry or concern when you were first introduced, but not ready to really jump in? There are so many ways to make money, Joanne. That's the problem. Okay. There, like to find a, I, I think to find a, a niche that you really want to focus on, mm -hmm. um, that was probably my, my biggest hurdle because I have so many hobbies and I, I enjoy so many things and mm -hmm. to try and put me in a category, I felt like, no, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't want to go down that road. I, I didn't want to commit. So <laughs> that was my biggest, the biggest hurdle was not committing to, and just, and just moving forward. Right. And you felt like, I guess at the end of the day, you don't have to be married to your niche. Right. And sometimes at the start, we feel like we got to like instantly marry it. And this is, this is my niche forever. As long my, as I'm online. Identity, right. It's my identity. It's who I am. Right. It's like, that's not it at all. Like it's not like, uh, and that's, what's fun. You can really get good at one as long as you enjoy it. Um, and it, it really didn't take off for me until I focused on one. Right. So that was, that was very surprising. I, I like doubted myself that, you know, I have all these things. What am I going to do? And then I, I landed on one and then I started to see some progress. And mm -hmm. then you start to feel better about what you're doing. And you're like, OK, maybe this is a good, uh, right. you know, a good path. So Right. Yeah. And you can definitely switch it up and switch it around. But pick one and see it through. Learn the whole process. The process. Yes. Right. Learn, that is pick the one you want to learn the process with. And then you can duplicate and you'll duplicate a lot easier, quicker, faster, efficiently, instead of trying to do five different offers and learning all at once with five different offers, then you're making five times the mistakes, five, five times the fixes, right? Do it all with one first. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to narrow down the, the problems when you, when you have so many lines in the water, right? Right. It is my thought. So when I did narrow down one, I made that process very smooth. And then I tried to automate it. Mm -hmm. So it could, I could spend more time on building the other, uh, the other niche that, that I enjoyed or right. the path I was going to take. Right. So when you're in that process, cause I already can see in the comments, we have people are like, well, how do I decide? <laughs> so let's, everyone will pick a, a, a niche in a different way, but let's talk about how Brandon did it. Um, so you have a you have hobbies. You're did you like make a list? Did you write it all down and then see how you felt about it? Like what was your process of deciding which one for sure you're gonna start with, without even mentioning what it is? Let's just talk about the process so people don't get hung up on what it is. So, it it was the ease of being able to monetize it. Actually, okay, um, I wasn't wait, I wasn't gonna waste time. So, I mean, I love to play guitar, right? But I wasn't going to try and, and I, I wasn't passionate enough about it to be able to try and find affiliate programs to monetize that and, and really get into, um, you know, go down that road. So uh, for me, it was just the research, which you can really get hung up on. And that's what takes so much time. So for me, it was something that I could look at affiliate programs that one that I could monetize things that were trending. Um, mm -hmm. And then also people have to believe that it's something that, that I believe in, because if I'm not passionate about it, then mm -hmm. why would somebody want to take advice or depending what type of content you do, right? I mean, because mm -hmm. you obviously do content where you're not the face of the product or the, the service right. you're offering. Right. But in my case, I really tried to lay it out of there was a, um, my niche, how I was, how I was going to monetize it and if it made sense, and then if I could get behind it. 
Okay. I love that. Um, and Angela, I love this question. So we're going to answer this question. Should you choose a niche that you know facts or info on? So something that I, I would recommend that you know something about it, for sure. You don't have to. Um, but you just, you don't need to be an expert on it. So there's a line there. You just need to know more than the people that are following you. Yeah, just okay. a, step, a step ahead, right? That's it. That's because step if ahead. you can give advice to somebody that you're a step ahead of, then you're helping them. You've already made that mistake or you've already gone down that road. So any, you know, that's the people you want to um, be able to help. And the more you know, the more people you're going to be able to help. But I would not say that you have to be, like you said, Joanne, it's, you just have to be a little bit ahead of the, the person that you're giving advice to. Right. So I'm going to piss a few people off with this statement. <laughs> this is All my right. own right. statement, my own opinion. <laughs> you don't have to be passionate about it. There's this whole thing, follow your passion, follow your passion, follow your passion. Sometimes things that you're passionate about, hobbies you're passionate about, you don't want to, you're, you end up making more emotional decisions in your business instead of ones that actually make you money. Well, that was the reason I said monetize. Right, exactly. That's it. I mean, you can yep. have, you can be passionate about a lot of things. I mean, right. But you're right. It's, um, it's my, my criteria was mm -hmm. something I could monetize. And yep. that was, that was trending and it, and it, it worked. And I'm not saying don't, you don't have to enjoy it. You definitely need to enjoy it. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, but it doesn't need to be like, oh, this is my hobby. I've loved forever. I love bonsai trees. That doesn't mean that's your business. Yeah. Yeah. Hobbies can be just that. The IRS looks at hobbies and income very different. Exactly. So, um, if you want to make money, then pick a, pick a hobby, right? If you right. want to, uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's... exactly. So like d differentiate between hobbies and your passions, is that a hobby or can I monetize this hobby, yeah. right? In a real way, that's a lasting business instead yeah. of this is what I'm most passionate about. Like somebody once said, I'm most passionate about naps. Doesn't mean you're going to make a business around it. You can. You can. You can right, right? You can. Right? So that's what. Find that's a sleep really couch. Great. It's in a different way, you know. Yes. <laughs> you can sell blankets, right? I mean, you can right? it's like whatever and, and just start a. So, so there, that's the biggest problem is there's so many ways to make money online. There's this big, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a big funnel, right? Yeah. Everybody, that's what's so awesome. We have all these people on here watching this live that everybody has these, they come from different, uh, different places and, and walks of life. And with everybody starts to funnel down and we all found ourselves here today, you know, watching this, right? So right. there's some commonality between whatever you're going to find. Um, right. So that's, that is definitely a challenge. For a lot of people, I, I see that. Um, and that's one of the things that, that I try to help with when I when I mentor and coach. That is really trying to narrow that down and how can you make money? Because bottom line, you can be passionate and it can be fun. But if, you, if you're working at it for months and the time and energy that goes in doesn't result in anything, you are going to get discouraged. Exactly. And you want to figure it out. Is it the content? Is it, you know, what are, what's your angle? And a lot of times people then blame the offer, but sometimes it's not the offer. Yeah. It's just adjusting your hooks in your videos or what your text looks like on the screen. And that's why, that's why I said, changes and experimenting. Said one, there's always a test, which is comes back to my statement of if you're too passionate about it, you're too emotionally attached. You're then too emotionally attached to the content and you're unwilling to test new ways to create things or try new ways, you know, but when yeah. you're focused on monetizing, you're open to testing, you're open to trying new hooks, new videos, new headlines, because you're just, you don't have that little personal connection to it. It's a little bit easier. Would you agree? Disagree? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I see you, it's, it's easy to put numbers, uh, numbers to it. I mean, you can, when you put, uh, when you put a funnel out there and you put it, you put an ad and you see your conversion rate, 
um, you know, your conversion rate doesn't lie. I mean, those are numbers. If, exactly. When you when you send your automated emails and you see that people don't open and how many clicks are on there, you know, obviously your email, your your um, you know, your copyright wasn't good. Maybe the, yeah. the images. There's mm -hmm. so many things that don't lie. Right. And when you have that, when you're a little bit too emotional, you tend to just overlook what the numbers are telling you. Yeah. Oh, and then and then if you're emotional, <laughs> then you got trolls. That's the worst part. And what your content is, if you're putting your heart on your sleeve and you're out there, that's that adds a whole nother layer right. of, right. Of, of just personal development. If you're trying to put yourself out there to make money and show show yourself and you're attached to the emotion. Mm hmm. And, and you have these people, the, the naysayers and everybody that's going to try and put you down. Uh, that is that is wearing, too. I mean, right. So that's, passion, passion can hurt. Yeah. In some ways. Definitely. Yeah. Um, a lot of us are an, ultimately building a personal brand. We're the face of our brand. You're going to have trolls come after you. But that's where that thick skin comes in a little bit. And you you want to have content that is dynamic enough that you piss a group of people off. You actually push them away because your content is collecting your ideal client. So it actually is somewhat of a good sign. When it's it's a numbers game. If I don't, if I don't have to come around because you're pissing somebody off, which means you're really engaging with someone else. Yes. Yeah. I don't. If I don't have trolls and people commenting, then I know <laughs> I'm not working hard enough. Yeah, there is definitely, uh, it's the weirdest thing ever, but it's just, it's the reality of the beast. Yeah, Joanne, you said you have thick, thick skin, and, and you do. Yep. So if that's your method of content, but it seems like it is for a lot of people. So where, which platform did you choose, or did you go on a, in a whole bunch of different ones? Did you start with one platform? What was your first strategy when starting uh, with content? TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, it was TikTok. I... I started a post and then I got into, um, I got into crypto. Okay. So with, with that, it was, um, the passive income at that point, it was definitely trending, uh, but it was a big interest of mine too. So, so that's where it started. So TikTok okay. and then just posting passive income videos and then TikTok live. And I had a great, um, a great hook. It was a great exchange of, mm -hmm what people got for the engagement. Um, okay. It was a very, it was very good. Okay. So when I say it was, it's, it, it does, you'll see the trend goes up and trend goes down. Right. So then I'm, I'm starting to build the next brand and start to work on, work on that. So it's always progressing. Cool. Did you struggle with going live? Like when no. you first started, you were just good with it? Like no, I was, I've done so many things that, it, you know what the most discouraging thing about going live is, is you're just talking to yourself, right? Because right. you look at it, there's no engagement back. You have, you're looking at comments. Um, it's all about the energy that you put out. Um, and it's tough when you get nothing back, right? When people are just yeah. typing comments. Right. So that's really my next, my next journey is, is trying to, um, to nurture my community and get that personal engagement because, I want something back from the room because I want to be able to give the most I have. And right. the only way you can do that is if, if that's, you know, reciprocated somehow. So, mm -hmm. so, so what do you, what's on your list of ways to improve that engagement ways to improve the nurturing that you talked about, what that you're working on? Consistency. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to say consistency because anytime when, when you are putting in the work and you're you're putting a post or you're reaching out or uh, texting or talking and putting content into the, into the space, whatever space you're trying to um, have your digital footprint in, anytime mm -hmm. that you are consistent in that, you start to see those numbers and numbers mm -hmm. don't lie. Yep. And they'll still have those ebbs and flows even when you're going live, but go, if you are on the go live train, go live consistently, get, get on a schedule, make it so your followers can rely on it. They just, people love, there's a reason people watch reruns all the time. People like to be around. They like to watch things. They know they like to watch people. They know. And um, they, they start to trust you because if you mm -hmm. show up, 
and you're always there, they, they will trust you. And the things that you say start to have some merit because you're taking the, the time and, and energy and, and building your education and sharing your knowledge with people. Right. Okay. So let's talk about that little piece because this is the other big question those starting out really struggle with. They see, they feel like they need to put content out, content out that is, I'm successful. Right. I've made I, X number of dollars. <laughs> I hate to I hate to see it. I'm I call I call BS because I really do. I'm like, right? don't don't do it because I can spot a liar like a mile away. Exactly. So exactly. there are other pieces of content to put out. So let's share when you first went, what what were some of the pieces of content that you created to help build start building a following? Because that's really the focus at the start. When you're at day one zero followers, the goal is how do I build a following? How do I get engagement? So what are some of the topics and hooks and things like that, that you brought up at the start? So in my process of finding my niche, I started mm -hmm. to do research on affiliate programs, like a lot of people will do. Mm -hmm. And what it's, it's almost like you're going fishing. You're just putting a bunch of lines in the water mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, I'm, once when they met my criteria of one, they were, I was going to be able to monetize them. Right. And they were a niche that I knew that had pro that had good programs or referrals. Then I was able to put the lines in the water and say, Hey, look at, you know, these dog, uh, you know, dog affiliate programs, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the chewy and all the, all of these. Mm -hmm. um, and if they got, if they got any traction, then I would, then I would kind of pivot from there. So, I was just fishing and I'm like, okay, let me, give, let me give this a shot. And they were all in my, my wheelhouse that I would be able to run funnels to, and, you know, have affiliate programs with, and I did the research. So it's not like I, I had a, a video go viral and next thing you know, I'm, I'm searching for pet affiliate companies. Right. right? So, so I, I did my research, just understanding I was going to be in that, that wheelhouse. And then I just threw lines out there. And if the videos took and I got a little bit of response and, you know, a TikTok's funny, right? I mean, right. <laughs> it, it is. You, you, it's like the last videos that I, I started posting, they all get kicked off now. So I, you know, you go in ups and downs, Yep. Um, but that's, you just have to keep, keep trying and look, I would always look at people that were doing the same thing that their videos went viral and that I knew that. I could mirror or at least give the same type of energy on, on the space. Like, oh, I love that. Can you put the same type of energy into it? That's important. Nobody wants to be like, Hey, give me yeah. a like. Well, and I, <laughs> I'm not like, really into it. I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. It, well, and then, like when people point and you're like, Oh, you know, you can make, you know, this much, you know, make this much money and you're not making that much money. Like, it's just a thing, right? People are posting. So, so right now I just, it's one of those that I just call, you know, I, I can't, I can't do that unless I'm really making it. So, right. and, and that, that, that happens. I mean, you're, but, but people understand it and you want to learn from somebody that you're watching too. So right. if you come off likable and whatever content, I, I don't know who, like who I follow. Like you asked me that question at the beginning, Joanne, mm -hmm. I don't know like yeah. who got me into legendary right i just know right. that there was this process i'm following people and i'm looking and and they gave me that okay i that engagement right or whatever that energy that that i liked that i could learn from them just like a coach or a teacher or we, we all have our favorite teacher or our favorite coach or whatever right. it is totally. right yeah that's so it's just putting your content out there just go fishing Yep. And know that you're not going to, you're, you're sometimes just going to drown worms, you know? I mean, that's it. But. And try, like, you can take the same idea and just make five, 10 different pieces of content, just set in a little bit different way and see which one lands, right? It's, yeah. It's just that little bit of a variation in your bait. You don't need to, it can be almost, a, it will feel like you're repeating yourself but it won't look that way to your audience. I think that's what's important to differentiate. 
Yeah. And once when you, th they may not see the other videos. Exactly. Like, they, <laughs> they may it. only, they may only see one and that may start the engagement to where you can be your true self and they want to learn from you or, and it's not really, it's not about them signing up to your link through this. It doesn't matter if, if you're worried about that, you will not be successful. It, if you're worried about, oh, I'm, I have to engage for this one person, you know, the, if you're one person and, and I want them to click on my link, I want, I don't want to help them unless if they're click, it doesn't matter. It's a numbers game. Yeah. If you're yourself and you're genuine, mm -hmm. you're going to, you will be successful. Release the conversion a, a bit when creating content. Put your yeah, focus would, on would, serving instead of clicking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, um, a very good strategy. Yes. Yeah, I'm, and then go back later and see what content actually got you more clicks, and then start giving more value in that area. Yes. And then you switch back your focus right. <laughs> to providing value because if you speak on camera, fishing for the for the buy. They can smell it. They can see it. Yeah. But if you speak with your authentic self, a place of service, a place of giving value, sharing your story, they can see that too. And then they'll follow you more. And then they're yeah. more likely to end up giving you that click that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think if you start out broad at the very beginning, people that are looking to try and do that, is start out broad and then you'll start to narrow it down. And what will happen is, you'll end up finding yourself along the way. Right. Oh, I love that. Finding yourself along the way, finding your story that you're comfortable with sharing. And then you share it over and over and over and over. You know, I had a member that like, well, I told my story two weeks ago in this video. So I don't want to, what do I say now? And I'm like, you say it again and again and again and again, and you break it up into 10 little videos and you make all of those. And then you say all of those again and again and again, because you're hitting new people each time. Yeah. And, and when they like, they're comforted by hearing the same thing over because now they know you're not lying to them. Yeah. And it, that the consistency and, and mm -hmm. being transparent. Yeah. All day long. Um, it's just hard to grasp sometimes, I think, when you're new to this. Well, what does consistent mean? It's not just posting a video every day. It's also telling your story every day. It's sometimes putting out the same content over and over and over and being consistent with that as well. Um, and I think that's the piece people miss because they feel they get bored with their own story or their own content they're creating. But that doesn't mean your audience is. Yeah. And I think it's when you start to see that your, your audience and they are, they are converting and you have people that are following you, mm -hmm. it is better to have quality numbers than it is the, the quantity. So oh, you can, yeah. not, it, it, it doesn't matter if you have a million followers or uh, mm -hmm. 50,000 followers, but people can make just as much money off of 10,000 followers or 5,000 loyal followers that want to hear your story. Mm -hmm. than a bunch of people that, don't think you're genuine and they just follow because you throw content out there. Right. Exactly. And a lot of action takers don't necessarily go and like and comment and all that stuff. They just click and go. Yeah. When they're ready to take action, they just click and go. That's so all. You, that's, you yeah. You can't. Yeah. Like, I just watch and, and mm -hmm. I watch and watch and, and, and then eventually I'll, when I'm ready, I'll make the, the commitment. And I right. think a lot of people do that. They just want to this the confirmation that it is real. You mm -hmm. can make money online. It's, um, yeah, that's it's the real deal. So one thing I noticed on your questionnaire, um, you've built a list of seventeen thousand. So there are many of our members starting out. They're like, do I really need an autoresponder? Maybe I'll just put one on there, right? So let's talk about the importance of the follow-up. Okay. So this was so, so it was to the point to where I had, I would do a live mm -hmm. and I would have people sign up and I had so many people, I had, I had to actually have a virtual assistant input them 
because I, so I had my email autoresponder, but then I had another software that, um, that was working with the autoresponder. Okay. That, and I, I actually had to outsource that because I was getting so many, so many emails or so many leads in one, one night. I mean, some, wow. I would have like a hundred. And so you need, like, if you want to be successful, you have to have an autoresponder. Right. Um, just to set the time that it takes to, um, to be personal myself, I only like to send like one email a week. I, I don't okay. follow up. Everybody has their different, um, mentality, but to answer yeah. your question, yes, Joanne, you do need an autoresponder. I okay. built my list because it was a, I had a really good offer. So right. it was an offer and then being able to automate that mm -hmm. was so Same. you have people, is your automation only sending one a week or you have an automation that's more frequent and then you send an additional email once a week? Uh, an additional email once a week. Okay, perfect. But that autoresponder is still more frequent. Yeah, so Don't I be use- afraid to well, email no, no, your no, list, guys. <laughs> I, only do once, I only do once a week. So okay. when they sign up, you get one email and uh, you get one email and then it'll be one a week. And then if there's anything extra, mm. um, so I don't push. Okay. Yeah, I would probably in that first week, I would put them a little more frequent. You can definitely do that. You probably see more conversions because they're a little bit hotter. It's more front of, front of mind at that time. Um, and then I love that you also just continue to continue to write, continue to add to your autoresponder, like put write an email, send it out to your list and then add it to the autoresponder. <laughs> right? I think. I think that's some of the things when I talk about the engagement, trying mm -hmm. to build rather than just going live on TikTok. It's, hey, I'm, um, you know, I'm going to do a, a, a Zoom call or we're going to do a, a, a Canva, uh, Canva workshop. So mm -hmm. things that spontaneous that that I like to do that keeps the engagement. And I think that's one of the things when I said earlier about, you know, nurturing your community. And I love that. You give lessons and you let them know, hey, I'm doing no. this special I'm like, I get, class. It's not, like you, it's not like you sign up and then, okay, thanks. Okay. And then, yeah. you know, that's that's not how you want to build a strong community. So right. that's really where my focus has been the past few weeks. I love that. And that's a great idea. How to create, you know, things on you're, your you're doing it anyway. A little master class that's 20, 30 minutes long. Show you're them doing it anyway, right? right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going through your, all the software that everybody signs up every mm -hmm. you're, you're doing it anyways, whether it's Canva, whether it's Fiverr, uh, right. get response, you know, the software is endless, right? Once you learn it, you can teach it, yes. show it, put it in part of your live, make it a piece of content that people can, Hey, I'm going to do a quick presentation on ClickFunnels next week. Come check it out at 6 PM on TikTok live. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. You don't have to be the ClickFunnels expert. You're just introducing someone else to it. Yes. There's different things you can do depending on where your audience is. If they're brand new, they're not going to know anything that you're talking about. So that may not work. So you really need to gauge. And that's where that interaction, what is my audience looking for right now? What do they need that I can teach them, provide them? And that's what you do in that moment. What works best for your current audience, you know? Yeah, and that is one thing about legendary is it's you can always refer to to legendary because no matter where they're at in their process the education that legendary offers it really sums up right. what they need what they need to know so mm -hmm. if they can go through that education process it helps with the information that i provide and that people that that they're searching for it just gives an all around educational platform and that the 15 day challenge is, is fantastic. I mean, uh, it's right. the best value that anybody can get in affiliate marketing. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. And, I, and, I, I, lot, and it's not just because I'm here with legendary. No, it's just, no, I, I've seen like, a lot out there and it's right. a real deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you cannot, you cannot go wrong it, with the information that they provided. And I, I wouldn't even think about trying to, to mirror that because it's so I don't have the time like it's you yeah. can let his legendary mastered it they they have their uh their their process I'm just glad to be a part of it and you can uh refer people always back to um the 15-day challenge and it's it's a 
you'll pick up different things every single time. Yeah, definitely. All right. It's a new year. We've been on TikTok. Are you going to go omnipresent, go to another platform, a couple platforms? Have you thought about it? Yeah. So um, my, so a couple more channels. So I am definitely uh, already in the process of that. Um, and then trying to build, uh, build my YouTube, uh, then YouTube shorts. Okay. I love so it. yeah, I think, and that's a, another, another platform that is, is very similar mm -hmm. and the, the content stays up for a while. So yeah, definitely. And, and I feel like that matches your audience, your style, your personality, right? Each, each social platform kind of has their own thing. And I feel like YouTube and YouTube shorts would be great for you. So that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Very exciting. What would you tell and leave anyone that's watching right now that's brand new to the challenge? What's your one piece of advice for them? Just keep it simple. Don't get overwhelmed. There's so many different types of software that you can use. Just because you can doesn't mean you have to. I love that. Just understand the process. Make one funnel, one simple process and perfect it. You go through it yourself. Make sure that you go from the very beginning where they click all your links work and everything is branded and it looks seamless. Great. Test so, guys, it, test your funnel. Yeah, <laughs> test, it, test it, make it look aesthetically pleasing. Have somebody else, you know, have somebody else test it, look at it. And it's still a process. I mean, I still do that now, but if you can get good at it at the beginning and you're getting started, Yes, I would. That's where I would start. Just, just keep it basic, keep it simple, and just yeah. start with one. Right. And guys, don't get hung up on what funnel builder or which software to use. It's just software. All yeah, you I've tried. I've tried five different kinds. Pick the one that gets you live. That's it. Which yep. one do you not like? Get angry when you're building a funnel and you can get live. That's the one you go with. You stick with it. Doesn't matter which one. <laughs> that's yes. it. Yep. Make it make it simple, and you, it should be fun. I mean, there's that there's that feeling of accomplishment when you click all the way through. They got their, uh, you know, they got their free ebook, and now they're under your email list, and now you know, right. you know, now you have a follower, right? And it's, it, I guess, there's a false sense of security there, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but the sense of accomplishment is that you did something from the very beginning to the very end, and then you can scale that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Great advice this morning. Guys, go give Brandon a follow on TikTok. The Life Scaper. All connected. T-H-E-L-I-F-E-S-C-A-P-E-R. Yep. So that's really, so that's my brand. So what I'm doing is, so I was a landscaper, right? Right. So now it's more like coaching and, um, and just shaping what you want your life to be. Yep. So it's not, I'm not you know, shaping the ground anymore. It's shaping people and do that with my, my kids. And, you know, oh, it's, it's, I love that. Uh, so yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, very, very good. Very good place. Yeah. Awesome. Well, go give Brandon a follow. Let him know that you saw him on wake up legendary in the comments of some of his content. Um, and you got to come back, Brandon, let us know, especially when you hop onto YouTube and all of that and start growing over there. Got to come back. We'll get you on with Dave and uh, share your story and your progress with us. Yeah, very excited. All Thanks right, for having you. me, Joanne. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. All right, guys. What a week. If you've missed any of the episodes this week, please go back. Watch the replays for sure. So much was shared. Um, and I'm super pumped for next week. Blueprints members, we have a guest coach today, Carolyn is coming uh, to our hot seat today at 2 p.m. Eastern. So you do not want to miss that. Um, and next week we have Josh Smith coming. Uh, so have a great weekend. And as always, stay legendary. Bye.